Android Wear is almost upon us, promising to thrust the smartwatch into the limelight. But the concept isn't as new as you'd think. Join us as we take a look at Android Wear's amazing smartwatch ancestors. Companion computers that live on your hand have been a long-running sci-fi dream. From cartoons and TV shows to the Usborne Book of the Future, which predicted we'd all one day be wearing Ristos, which, incidentally, is a way better name than Smartwatch. It's not just pop culture, though. Smartwatches have existed in real-life tech for decades. From Seiko's early high-tech timepieces to the Linux-powered IBM watchpad or Fossil's Wrist PDA, the history books are littered with attempts at making the sci-fi dream a reality. Despite repeated attempts, smartwatches have never really taken off, which is a shame because some of them are really quite clever. Without further ado, here are our three favourite attempts at smartwatch success. We begin in the mid-90s, an era that saw Microsoft partner with watchmaker Timex to create the Datalink series of smartwatches. Bill Gates and chums cooked up a novel interface for uploading information to the Datalink, whereby data was beamed via flashing lines on a CRT monitor, picked up by a sensor on the face of the watch. Using this method, the data link could store phone numbers, to-do lists, or anniversary reminders. I do worry, though, what other information Microsoft could have stored in that flashing code. It looks like you're writing a letter. The data link was well received and made it to space, but was eventually overshadowed by another kind of device that was also pretty good at storing phone numbers. Microsoft wouldn't let the smartwatch dream die, however, and in 2003 would unveil the most ambitious smartwatch project ever attempted. Smart Personal Objects Technology, or SPOT, was Microsoft's plan to take over all manner of household objects, but began with a series of timepieces. The first spot watches were built by partners Fossil and Sunto and received data from MSN Direct, an FM radio-based service that initially cost $60 a year to access. Using MSN Direct, the spot watches could receive data wirelessly, but only if you were in a region that had access to its FM signals. It was also limited in what you could do. You could see news headlines, but not full stories, and you could get messages through MSN Messenger, but you couldn't reply. More spot watches were built, but to no avail. And in 2008, Microsoft confirmed its smartwatch was dead. Just one year later, however, we were confronted with another attempt, and this one packed all modern conveniences. As well as a 1.3-inch color capacitive touchscreen, LG's watch phone could make voice calls, removing the need to even carry a phone. It had 3G capabilities and even packed a front-facing camera to do video chat, something not even modern gadgets like Samsung's Galaxy Gear can manage. Sadly though, the watch phone was flawed. It cost as much as a smartphone, but could perform a fraction of the tasks and required you to wear a Bluetooth headset, unless you were happy to shout at your wrist in public. Home. And if Tokyo doesn't like it, sorry Dave, I'm just in a lift. I might lose you. Dave? 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 The watch phone was yet another in a long string of smartwatches that had us briefly excited but quickly sank into obscurity, failing to win over the wider world. Today, Android Wear has captured our attention, but now faces the same problem as its often forgotten forefathers, convincing the public that a computer on their wrist is more than just a science fiction dream. Will Android Wear succeed, or will its name be added to the list of failed smartwatch experiments? Let me know and check back next time for another adventure in tech.